Tomorrow marks 10 years of war in Afghanistan, a country that's seen market change over the past several decades. Tonight, a look at a collection of archival footage, images from the 50s and 60s that show a sharp contrast to the Afghanistan we see in news footage today. Cheryl Jennings has tonight's Assignment 7 report. So many people have forgotten how Afghanistan used to be. Dr. Mohammed Kayumi is in the perfect position to talk about the power of education and teach about the history of the country in which he was born. He's come a long way from his days in Kabul as the son of a carpenter and a mother who was not able to go to school. The Afghanistan of uh, the days that I was growing up was uh, Afghanistan of hope. Afghanistan, you know, people had aspirations. Uh, people wanted to improve their lives. So how do you get from Afghanistan to Hayward? Hmm. Well, it's a long story after finishing college and then getting into uh, to my graduate studies. and getting Dr. Kayumi is the president of Cal State East Bay in Hayward, where he's led the university for four years. He's showing me archival photographs and videos from Afghanistan's Minister of Information that show life in Afghanistan in the 50s and 60s. And the scenes could be from anywhere in a modern country. There were plenty of jobs in construction, as well as the traditional jobs of farming and herding animals. Another thing that was really happening back as I was growing up was the beginning of the uh, strong emancipation of women, where women were becoming part of the workforce. Many girls were having an opportunity to go to school and go to the university. Most women did not wear burqas to cover themselves. But burqa, you know, what people miss is that burqa actually came from Pakistan. It's, uh, it has not only about 100 years ago. It does not have roots in Afghanistan. Women were in government. There were family planning centers where women were taught about limiting their family size in order to be able to provide for their children. This is an Independence Day celebration in Afghanistan. The city of Kabul was lit up like the 4th of July during its Independence Day fireworks shows. Afghanistan had an air force and a large army. Part of what is what's important here is the country had a very functioning military. The country had stability and drew tourists from all over the world. There were even car races because the roads at the time were so good. And look at the forest in a country most of us only know as a barren war zone. I mean, it looks like areas of Sierra Nevada. There's hardly any left there right now. But this is what it looked like back That's in how it the 60s looked like. and 70s. Yeah. Yeah. It's really I'm actually remarkable. the 80s, yeah. This is before the Soviet invasion 30 years ago started Afghanistan's downfall. Then terrorists used the country as a base to plot attacks on the United States. And the Taliban moved in, repressing girls and women. What these groups are really trying to do is they are trying to make sure that women will not be able to get an education. So as part of that, they'll always be subordinated. They'll never have economic independence. Dr. Kayumi is hoping to reach Afghans of all ages with this historic footage of Afghanistan. My thought has been for the young generation to get a better sense of pride in it. And as part of that one, I think that would be a way that they can remain engaged. For the older generation, is a sense of nostalgia. But more importantly, I think for most of the Western uh, audiences to, to see that, you know, for con the country that was moving along and it was thriving back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, and it had a plan, it had a future. Dr. Kayumi knows from experience that the best way to drive Afghanistan back to the future is through education. When we talk about the American dream, I think the American dream is really an embodiment of the, you know, the human dream, and the, uh, that everybody would like to live peacefully, would like to thrive, and would like to have a life built for their uh, children that was better than theirs. Cheryl Jennings, ABC 7 News.